So I figured I would do an update on some of the stuff I've been working on in the F-15. Uh, and for that, I need to show you some parts. So first, we have this thing. This is a cut canopy bow from an F-15. And as you can see, it was pretty bad. Um, it was cut with a saw right there on both sides. Um, the good news is, is this bit was saved. I don't have this, which was nice. The only reason I bought this is because it had a lot of the stuff on it that was basically unobtainium, okay? I've got all three of the mirrors and they're in excellent condition, okay? I've got the lock chute and aerial refueling lights. I think this is lock chute and this is lock chute and that is aerial refueling. Um, my memory could be completely screwball on that, but I think I'm correct. Um, all of that wiring survived. I'll need to clean it up. Some of it I'm gonna try to save, some of it I won't be able to save, and that's okay. Um, I also got the standby compass. Uh, the standby compass really got chewed up in shipping. There is a, a post light that sticks out just a little bit, and it was sma the, the light was smashed and the housing was smashed flat against the face of the compass. Uh, but for the purposes of me recreating it, um, it's perfectly fine. Um, I'll be able to I'll be able to recreate it using one of the tools that I also bought recently. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and take a peek over at the, uh, the the canopy, and you can see where all this stuff is going to end up going. Okay, so here we have my canopy. As you can see, it's missing all of the neat little greeblies that make life on an F-15 canopy. Okay, um, but it's otherwise complete. Uh, taking this thing off by myself from up there was not fun. I do not recommend it to anybody, <laughs> especially in the condition I was in while I was doing it. And I suspect you may have already watched that video. Um, so there's that. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other stuff I've been working on for the F-15. So this is the canopy that I was kind of, or not the canopy, the windscreen that I was kind of forced to buy when I got that canopy bow. Um, it had this huge split going right up the front. In fact, I'm gonna zoom over there really quick and show it to you and then I'll zoom back. Okay, so that's the windscreen glass, and you can see that huge split in the front of it. Uh, that's how it was delivered to me. That's what it showed in the auction. Uh, so you can see cutting this out was no loss. So back to the can or to the windscreen frame. Okay, so um, I cut this out in order to be able to make it manageable to use. I am going to clean up these edges and I mean get a look at the thickness of this stuff. This is literally an inch thick piece of acrylic. No joke. And this was not fun. I went through four acrylic jigsaw blades taking this thing down. Um, but the reason I did it is because I'd like to be able to use it in the cockpit. If you look up there, you can see that windscreen was the one that I got with the cockpit. Uh, the problem is, is that now that I'm basically a one guy operation, uh, moving that can be problematic because it probably weighs about 150 pounds all by itself. Um, and it's very hard to control, especially when you're trying to move it around. So what I'm gonna do is instead of using that, I'm gonna use this. Um, like I said, I will get all of these edges polished up and I'll get it cleaned up and make it look really nice uh, and go from there. Uh, you may have noticed 
little tracking dots, okay? Uh, those got added because I did a scan of this windscreen frame for one of the Falcon BMS team members that is doing artwork on the F-15C in Falcon BMS. And that is just wicked cool. Um, I hope to get more stuff scanned for them uh, in the future to make the F-15 model in Falcon BMS even better. Because we all know DCS is basically a lost cause at this point. Um, so I'm going to move this out of the way so we can look at the other thing that I got done since the last update. Uh, this is the storage drawer system for all of my avionics and other stuff uh, for the F-15 project. Um, let's see, that'll pull out, yeah. So we have a HUD. Um, I still have some finish work I need to do to that, uh, as well as some wiring. Uh, miscellaneous bits and pieces. Uh, these are the boards that I designed and built to drive the master caution panel because this thing eats a ton of power. Each lamp I think pulls 250 milliamps and there are I think there's 74 or 75 bulbs in that thing um, and a lot of them can be on at the same time. You so you really don't want to mess with that. Uh, oops. What are we hitting? Oh, there it goes. Okay. Yeah, these drawer glides were just ridiculously expensive. Um, let's see. Oh, these are combiner glass? Yeah. These are new combiner glass panes that I made. Uh, that is the flight grip and the 6-4 sensor box that I built. Um, and that is the nav panel, I think. Yep. Um, that is going to be no fun to fix. <laughs> no joke, man. That is going to be no fun at all. And all of these are, uh, they're not Wago. They're Whamco. Uh, seven segment displays but they're incandescent there's little wires in them they're not LED and uh, those take special handling to properly drive but I do have example circuits and stuff for that making them work so there's that uh, let's see here we have uh, this is the VSD or the radar display this is the camera for the radar display. Uh, right? Yeah, that's the camera. And then this is the, uh, the front viewing thing uh, that you would actually look at. This one. Ah, come on. Ah, there we go. So it would sit in front of it like that. And you're basically looking through a beam splitter. Uh, and the beam splitter is so the camera can see through the top there and record the content of the uh, the radar display. Is that fit? Yeah. Okay. And then let's see. This is the ALR 56C uh, twos display. Um, I've got a really neat thing for that that I picked up a few years ago. Uh, let's see if I can actually reach it here. Earth did I do with it? Oh, it's just, it's a layer deep apparently. So I'm gonna flip that over. Wow, this is not gonna give me any. Okay, I'm gonna set this thing down. Give me a sec. Okay, so that is a four inch diameter LCD panel. And that will allow me uh, to go ahead and fabricate a new face for this. So instead of working on all the crap I would need to do in order to drive the four inch diameter CRT that's in this, I can use that. 
and the control board for it right here takes an HDMI signal. It uses it looks like a mini HDMI and it's powered by USB-C. Um, I'm going to put this back in the box and we'll, we'll get back to this. Okay. Oh, we got a cranky. Okay, this is the MPCD or more officially known as I think it's the uh, it's the AWG 20 PAX or Programmable Armament Control Display. Um, this is the replacement for the old analog system that was originally in the F15A and pre msip uh, F15Cs. Uh, this has a green monochrome VGA CRT in it. It's the only CRT of that size for VGA that I could get at the time that I rebuilt this in 2002, I think? 2003, maybe? Uh, but it's wrong meaning because it's monochrome, it should be color. I do have a suitably sized LCD panel that I will be able to rebuild this thing with, and that is in the works. Um, and you can see all the crazy nonsense I got going on here. There's a, uh, this, <laughs> give you an idea of how old this is. This is an AT uh, PC keyboard connector because all of the buttons generate keystrokes. Carefully slide that back in there. There we go. Is anything in that one? Nope. Okay, and then there's miscellaneous spare parts and stuff like that. Anyway, um, I got all that handled a while ago. Um, over here is the bay where I have my flight control stuff in. And this is kind of dark and kind of hard to see, but this is where the control inputs exit the cockpit floor. And that is where I'm going to be installing uh, my force feedback system. And uh, in order to do that though, I've got to build it out first. I've got the stepper motors and the belting that I need, but I still need to build the, the supports and the brackets for it, okay? Um, it's uh, VP Force, I think, is the name of the, the guy that did the design. It's absolutely amazing, and it's going to be really cool. Um, got a case of the spins. Give me a second. Okay, um, and to show you what that motor looks like, or one of them, I printed uh, a motor and a bracket in order to give me an idea of the spacing, for the, the size. And as you can see, that is not a small motor. Um, it will do a pretty good job, I think, for there. And there's one each, both pitch and roll, in the F-15 uh, for flight feedback or flight control feedback. Um, and that is my next actual project task on the F-15 is getting that handled. Um, but again, in order to do that. I've got to get good dimensions on that stuff. And in order to get good dimensions on that stuff, I get to resort to this. And this is a, an EinScan or an EinStar a 3D scanner. And it actually does a really good job. I was very pleased with it. Um, it's not the cheapest thing in the world, but there's much more expensive ones out there. So I was very happy with that. What I was not happy about is having to buy this. Uh, it's basically a scanning spray. Um, I know that there's all kinds of alternatives that you can homebrew yourself, but I didn't really want to go that route and I sucked it up and spent the 40 bucks for the can. Hopefully I don't need any more than that. So there we go. Uh, that is the state of the F-15 project right now. Um, I'm hoping to get at least the stuff transferred from the canopy bow to the canopy uh, here real soon so I can take that off the end of the shot bot because I've got plans for that shot bot too. Um, but as soon as I get the, uh, uh, the mounting plates designed for the force feedback system, 
I will certainly do a video about that and kind of give you folks an idea as to what my workflow was with that. Uh, so that being said, I will see you folks later. Thank you for watching.